What is going on people inside that internet machine? Today we are doing a collection video. We're gonna be talking about the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. This is a console that some of you guys out there believe is the greatest console of all time. I haven't done a collection video since 2019, which is, so it's been over two years. I know I've added some really, really good stuff to the collection. And uh, yeah, if you haven't already subscribed, hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date on all of your CM Retro Gaming goodness. Here we go. Alright, so just like we always do, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Super Nintendo and my memories of the Super Nintendo. If you just want to see the games, I'll leave a timestamp right there. So you can just skip if you want to see the games. But uh, yeah, I like talking about the Super Nintendo. You know, we grew up in a Nintendo household. So we had the Nintendo and then when Super Nintendo came out, I believe we got ours around 90, 94 or 95, whenever Jurassic Park came out. Because I remember we got it for Christmas. We got Jurassic Park. And then, uh, you know, the next day we went to Meyer in Gehanna and got, uh, you know, some more games. We got Mario Kart and I forget what else. But, uh, yeah, great, great times with the Super Nintendo. Uh, pretty much everybody in my neighborhood had a Super Nintendo except the one guy, right? The one guy that's got the Genesis and the, the TurboGrafx-16. But for the most part, we all had Super Nintendo and we just loved to play. We were sports kids, so we played a bunch of sports games. Of course, you know, the classics, uh, Mario World, Zelda... Uh, Mega Man X, Mario Kart, you know, those types of games. We all had that kind of common stuff that everybody had. But um, yes, Super Nintendo controller feels great in your hand. It's definitely one of the most influential consoles of all time. And I think one of the things that makes the Super Nintendo so great is its library of games encompasses a lot of genres, right? So you don't just get one shooter, you get a bunch of shooters. You get a, you know, a bunch of RPGs. Uh, I, I believe this console was made specifically for RPGs. Uh, it's, it might be the best RPG console today. And I don't even play RPG, but I know what RPGs are on this thing and uh, they're great. All the Final Fantasies and uh, you know Secret of Manas and that kind of stuff. And they're all great games, touted as being the best games of all time in that genre, all on this console. Uh, you know, racing games, platformers, action games, you know, that kind of stuff. But uh, very, very excited to be here to talk about the Super Nintendo. And uh, we got to get all this stuff cleared off the shelf. I'm going to do that. You guys watch this Super Nintendo commercial. Maybe type out what are some of your favorite Super Nintendo games in the comments section down below. So, hey, let's just start looking at some games. This kind of power, this kind of challenge, this kind of flying, crashing, feeling. When you decide to get serious, there's only one place to come. The games of Super Nintendo. No one else creates this kind of experience. Because no one else creates these kinds of games. Now you're playing with power. Super power. And away we go. I will spare you <laughs> showing you all the Maddens, but these are all my sports games, right? My footballs, baseballs, basketballs, soccers, hockeys, all that stuff. Anytime I find some at uh, like a garage sale and like a big box and then I'll have them, I just throw them in the collection. They'll probably never get played, but uh, there they are. I do want to talk about a couple though, a couple that I grew up with. And I know we all sort of grew up with uh, different experiences when it came to the sports games, but man, when Tecmo Bowl on the NES, when we played that, it was crazy. And when we finally got on the Super Nintendo, Football games can't get any better than Super Tech Mobile, man. I wish they still made that series. It is absolutely amazing. Uh, on the other football game we played, NFL Quarterback Club. Now, we didn't really play this for the game, uh, although you do get like Warren Moon and Randall Cunningham, right? Those blast from the past players. But there is a quarterback challenge mode where it's like you throw the football as far as you can. There's like a little obstacle course. They have the, uh, the setup where the targets come across the screen and you, you try and throw the ball at them. Uh, Frank Thomas, Big Hurt Baseball. Big fan of Frank Thomas. Love Frank Thomas. Great player back in the day. But uh, this one has a really, really awesome home run derby mode that you don't want to miss. And, uh, of course, I was a soccer brat. I love playing soccer. Played a little, play a little soccer in high school. We have uh, Champions World Class Soccer. I still love to play this game uh, to this day. All the international teams on there. So, yeah, like when I was growing up in 90, 94, and 98, World Cup was huge. When this game got ported to the uh, 
to the 16-bit consoles, it was a, it was sort of a huge deal, you know, because we're starting to bring the arcade experience home. And I know we kind of saw it with some fighters, but NBA Jam was the first game that I remember playing at the arcade and then basically having almost the exact same experience at home and a lot of uh, a lot of fun memories with NBA Jam, a lot of competitive uh, basement NBA Jam tournaments going on. So yeah, absolutely awesome. Flip through this stack pretty quick. Uh, just added this one in the collection, Adam's Family. He's a little upgrade. I thought that was a rental sticker, but it's not. We got uh, Home Alone 1 and 2. Super pinball, huge pinball fan. And uh, you know, I love playing in the arcades back in the day. I remember like there was a South Park one and a Harley Davidson one. Now it's, you know, get them on PS4 or something. Uh, Porky Pig's Haunted Holiday. Hidden gem right there, maybe. Uh, best of the best karate championship. Batman Forever. No collection is complete without a Barbie. And Pitfall, the Mayan Adventure. This is a game that I have not played. I've kind of heard some good things about it and some bad things about it, but eventually one of these days I want to want to give that one a try. Next stack we got um, Scooby-Doo Mystery. Never played that one. Uh, Desert Strike. Cool series. Zool Intergalactic Ninja. Lethal Enforcers. I don't have the gun though, so there you go. Beethoven. We got uh, Rocco's Modern Life. And then the last one here, it's got kind of a rip label on it, but it is uh, Young Merlin. Paladin's Quest. Ah, uh, Goof Troop. I wish I had a better copy of that. It's kind of dingy and worn out. Alien 3, another game that I haven't been able to play. Uh, we have the Super Star Wars games. There's uh, Empire Strikes Back. Got this one at Maxine's Bargain Box for free. The Incredible Hulk. And I got it for free because I bought Gradius 3. I love shooters. I love STG shooting games. And um, yeah, I'm trying to get them all for the Super Nintendo. It's kind of been a slow process though. Uh, Star Fox with the Super FX chip. That was a huge deal back in the day. Rampart. Get the manual for that somewhere. Prince of Persia. Classic series. Got this in a trade with uh, Top Loaded Gaming. Jim Lee's Wildcats. I know I wanted to play that as soon as I got it, but I just haven't had time, man. We got uh, Secret of Mana and uh, Breath of Fire. Now, a lot of these RPGs that I own, I got them in like boxes of Nintendo game, or Super Nintendo games, and I just kept them, you know. Um, I don't know if I'll ever get around to playing RPGs on the Super Nintendo, but they are, they're fun to have, they're fun to collect, and uh, people really seem to like them, so why not? game that I almost beat but I put down because it was rage quitting super R type we got to like the second to last level on that one uh, Uniracer Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo love this game and I talk about it all the time it's probably my favorite fighting game of all time maybe Tech and Tech I guess it just depends on the day that you ask me uh, Super Strike Eagle Populous classic UN Squadron Bubsy we got Bubsy, Lethal Weapon, pretty good game. I actually really enjoy that game along with uh, True Lies. Uh, Spider-Man X-Men Arcade's Revenge. Never played that one. Ah, Mortal Kombat 3, this is the game. This is the game. Played that, I think that cartridge might not work because we played it so much back in the day. King of Monsters, got this out of a box. Uh, Fatal Fury 2. A lot of people love the Fatal Fury series. It's not a series that I've really got into. If you're out there, keep a, keep a lookout for this one. Zardian. Don't really see it a lot. Um, it's still, I think, relatively cheap. Yeah, I think I got that one for like $16. But uh, yeah, it's more of a mech game, which is uh, not bad, right? I'm about to give you the D. D Force. I don't know about that one. It's not great. It's playable, but it's not really that great. Uh, Felix. Love that game. Another game, Supernova. Another shooter. Uh, Return of the Jedi. Wario Woods. I actually never played that. Spawn. Flashback. There's Super Star Wars. Huge Star Wars fan. I love those games. They're my. They're probably my favorite three Star Wars games of all time. Wizard of Oz, classic. Choplifter 3, do not sleep on this one. If you see this one out there, definitely pick it up. Um, I think this is about a $30 game if I am not mistaken, but I love Choplifter. I've loved Choplifter since the uh, Sega Master System days. Dino City, out of this world. D 
Darius Twin, another shooter, man. Love him. Dragon's Lair. T2. Toy Story. X-Men Mutant Apocalypse. A game that I still haven't played. Uh, Frogger. Bugs Bunny Rabbit Rampage. Right, I think I have this in the box, maybe. Hold on, time out. I don't, but I'm pretty sure I got the manual. Killer Instinct Combo Breaker. Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters. Mortal Kombat! Mortal Kombat, classic PTO. Th Pacific Theater of Operations. I think that's a tactical game. I've never played. The cartridge is like super heavy. And then I got this from a retro rec room for like $10. It is Phantom 2049. Primal Rage. Fighters History. Aladdin. You gotta have Aladdin, man. If you're a Genesis person or a Super Nintendo person, you gotta have Aladdin. I think it's a rule. Uh, Arkanoid. Earth Defense Force. Underrated shooter. Austin Macker had this like a number nine of his Super Nintendo shooters. I think it should be a little bit higher. I actually really, really enjoyed this game. Um, it's not too terribly difficult. I, I call it a, a good afternoon game. Like if you had a couple hours in the afternoon, you could probably sit down and uh, play through that. You get to pick different weapons, whether you want like grenades or homing missiles and stuff like that. Always use the homing missiles. Makes life a little easier. Dun, 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 dun. Indiana Jones, greatest hits, classic, F-Zero, man, holy cow, wow, you see like visually back in the day, when the first time you saw this and you heard the, the music, absolutely amazing, uh, turn and burn, no fly zone, stunt race, uh, I got that one from Retro Rec Room for $6.99, also features the FX chip. How about that? Paperboy 2. God, I can't wait to play this one. These are games that I bought this year. Uh, Ride and Trod. Trad? Triad? Ride and Chinese Triad? Triad? It was a, vi a video rental from uh, Your Video in Manitoba, Canada. There you go. Gotta play this one too. Mystical Ninja. Uh, I love the Goemon game on N64. We have Skull Jagger. Another great game people don't really talk about a lot, True Lies. Don't get the hair with it though, that was mine. And uh, Maui Mauard uh, and Cold Shadow. Interesting one, I tried to play that, the controls were a little bit too slippery for me. Just like that. Go, go Power Rangers, you Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Pooch. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, man. What a phenomenon. Wrapped in an enigma that was. The Lion King, another 16-bit uh, essential. All right, we got to talk about this one. Jurassic Park on the Super Nintendo. Got this game for Christmas. And of course, who didn't like Jurassic Park back in the day, right? It was huge. And uh, I love this game. It's sort of top-down exploratory Zelda-ish, but not as, as deep as a Zelda game. We have to, like, find, uh, you know, key cards and certain things. And... Um, my only complaint, I sat down and I played this one afternoon, 10 hours. I sat there and I played through this game, maybe like 11 or 12 hours. But uh, no save feature, no passwords, which is an absolute bummer. Here's one you'll see all the time, Double Dragon 5, The Shadow Falls, Double Dragon fighting game. Super Battle Tank 2, Super Battle Tank. Got them both, look at that. Uh, Street Fighter 2. This is the regular edition. And again, I can't say Street Fighter is amazing. Love Street Fighter. Uh, Demolition Man, I love the movie. Love the movie. But uh, I, um, I don't have a lot of experience playing uh, that particular game. Here we go. We got some, I, I bought some of these uh, like penny bags to seal, but to put these Super Nintendo games in, but they seal on the back. So it's kind of hard to open it and then put the game back in. But luckily they're cheap, right? We have uh, Secret of Evermore. I heard that's really good. Uh, oh god, they're sticking together. The seventh, seventh saga. Death and Return of Superman. Is that the name of the game? Yep. Doom in the red cart. I love the red cart, man. It's great. Oh, if you ever see this one out there, it's kind of valuable. Cubert three. 
the Lost Vikings. Bomberman 2. I tried to get into the Bomberman series. I it's just it's just not for me. You know, just sometimes it's not for you. Act Razor 1 and 2. My uh, my brother-in-law Patrick loves the Act Razor series. Aliens vs. Predator. This is one of my childhood cartridges that uh, still managed to survive the test of time. Double Dragon. Super Double. Super Double Dragon. It's on the Super Nintendo, so you know it's super. We got Final Fantasy. Uh, which one is this? Final Fantasy 2. Final Fantasy 3. And uh, th this is actually an RPG that I will probably get around to playing. Uh, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. Because everybody sort of told me that this is kind of like a Final Fantasy Lite type game. It's like made for beginners. The quests are kind of easy. You don't have to grind as much. So if you know anything about uh, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest, if that's about right, that it's kind of an easier turn-based RPG, uh, this is probably something that I will play in the future for sure. I actually just got this one at uh, Half Price Books maybe six months ago don't see it a lot it's uh arrow the acrobat 2 i think it was ten dollars gotta have mario world mario world in my opinion is the greatest mario platformer ever made but uh it's not my favorite my mar my favorite is uh mario 2 and then mario 3 and then that one we got mario all-stars great collection of uh of games man to be able to play you know regular nintendo games on a super nintendo with those updated graphics and those big vibrant colors uh, it was like, this is the best video games it's ever going to be. We can't get any better than this, right? We know that that's not true, but back in 1993, 1994, uh, Yoshi's Island, fantastic game, except for the crying baby. Another game that I recently got this year. I think we got this at a flea market or something. Batman Returns, old beat em up. I got Spirit. How about you? Thunder Spirits for the uh, Super Nintendo. Another shooter. You know, guys, like I said, I love my shooters. Another game that I picked up this year, Sunset Riders. I got that on the cheap. I think I got that for about 65 bucks at uh, Video Game Music Exchange. Mario Kart. Well, what can you say? It's Mario Kart, right? It's launched in an entire franchise, which is absolutely amazing. I remember sitting down and playing battle mode with my dad and my brother and, you know, that kind of stuff. Got this in a trade it is the uh, Mario All-Stars Super Mario World Combo Cart. Cartridge is a little dinged up, but uh, you know, she plays fine and you can't complain about that. Like I said, a lot of my like RPGs and strategy games, I actually just buy in bulk and then I keep what I don't have. Uh, this is one of those games, I've never played it. Gemfire, I think Dan from Rebel Gaming Club wants that. Here's another game I bought with the best of intentions of playing, Wanderers from Yeez 3. Got that from Brian out at the Heath Flea Market. I think it was like 10 or 15 bucks. It was dirt cheap. The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. What a game. I did not actually like the light world, dark world thing. But uh, other than that, I mean, it's what a beautiful game, right? Super Metroid, a game that I still need to play. Kind of noticing the theme here with my Super Nintenders. Uh, Contra 3, The Alien Wars. I'm going to have uh, Phil Torpin on speed dial when I actually play that game. That way you can give me the pro strats. Sim Ant. You see this one out there, guys. Pick it up. Top Gear 3000. Last time I checked, this was about a $50 cartridge. So, yeah, don't pass on that. Oh, my God. Maybe my favorite Super Nintendo game. It's between this and uh, Super Mario Kart, depending on which day you ask me. This is my childhood copy of Mega Man X. Oh, my gosh. What an adventure. It was so fresh and so new. And when I was a, a kid on the Nintendo, I had two and three and I rented four. So to see Mega Man in 16-bit, the way they did that with the uh, the power-ups, um, you know, you collect uh, the, you know, the helmet and the boots and the dash boots and all that stuff. And, and you're using these to unlock like certain areas and you're like, oh my gosh, this is absolutely insane. And then you could like hold down, like in Mega Man 4, you could charge, like use a charge shot. But in Mega Man X, if you had like, if you're using a weapon of some kind, you know, that you've gotten from a boss, you could charge that weapon up too and it would just cause like mass damage. It's, it's definitely one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, if not my favorite game of all time, I don't, man, I have, a, I have trouble deciding, I can't decide. That's why I don't do top five or top 10 lists. But uh, Mega Man X is definitely up there as one of, one of the all time greats in my opinion. Speaking of Mega Man, this is the game that launched my channel. 
Mega Man X2. Some of you guys know the story. First of all, I love this game, right? But uh, some of you guys know the story. I was kind of on YouTube, just kind of watching. I went to a, a antique store slash auction house and they had this game and uh, Kirby Superstar, whatever that game is. And um, I got them for $5 each. And I got in my car and I sat there and I looked at them and I said, I cannot believe that I just found Mega Man X2 on the Super Nintendo for $5. Absolutely insane. And that's when I decided I should probably do these for YouTube and do pickup videos. This game is the reason why my channel exists. So definitely holds a special place in my heart. And when I played through it, my oldest son, uh, we sat on the floor in the game room and we fired up the Super Nintendo. And we played through this game in about two days. So yeah, love that game. Super Mario RPG. Okay, we'll just do it this way. We got the Donkey Kong Trilogy. Donkey Kang. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in time. Again, another game that I need to get around playing. Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Got that at a garage sale for a dollar, if I remember correctly. Uh, Final Fight 3. Got that in a trade from Dino988. Well, he didn't really, he, first, he didn't really trade it to me. That's sort of a lot. He sent it to me for free. He sent me this game for free. He said, I have two copies. I found one cheap. So uh, if you don't have it, I'll send it to you, which is great super dude but i did have another copy of mega man x2 and i made him a deal i said if i don't get to 5,000 subscribers by a certain date then i'll send it to you and he's like cool well we didn't make 5,000 subscribers so he got the other copy of x2 here we go kirby uh superstar eight games in one and we have uh kirby dreamland three all right so last we're gonna go through the box stuff real quick i don't really have a lot of boxed uh, super nintendo stuff i don't i mean i, I mean I, I got good stuff I, li I like my stuff i'm not saying anything bad about it but I don't really have any like world beat. I don't have like a Hagane complete in box, but uh, Tecmo Super NBA Basketball. Hyperzone. Actually, kind of fun. A little bit like uh, Star Fox meets F Zero. Space Invaders. Virtual Bart. Uh, Pit Fighter. That one's just the box. I think the manual's in there. Yeah, the manual's in there. Uh, when I see Pit Fighter at a uh, game store, it's usually like five, six, seven dollars. I'm not paying that for Pit Fighter. I'll wait till I find it in a box at a garage sale. Launch title, I think, if I remember. Pilot Wings. Again, the Mode 7 stuff was so revolutionary at the time. And uh, yeah, it was just great. Uh, Sim City. This is a very nice complete in box uh, copy of Sim City. Like, I think all the inserts and everything is are in there. Super Adventure Island. That's in a universal game case. Uh, came like that from the, from the store, so I just kept it in there. Super Ghouls and Ghosts. I was watching T-Belly play some uh, Ghost and Goblin-y type game. I was like, nope, not for me. Featured in my first pickup video ever, a copy of Demon's Crest. I think I got this on an offer up or a marketplace deal. I want to say 70 bucks, something like that. But I really, really wanted it. Uh, Super Castlevania 4. Castlevania, Super Castlevania 4. Uh, Castlevania 4. I think it's missing the manual, but I got that box from uh, Jeff McEntee, and the cartridge came from Woodbury and Retro Game Hunter. Got this on the cheap, I think it was like 20 bucks or something, at um, Super Game Team. It is Biometal, another shooter. It's in the box, the manual, the cartridge is in great condition. Unfortunately, the back of the box is a little dinged up, but you know, for 20 bucks, that's pretty much what the cartridge goes for. And then the last thing I got here, a very nice minty box of Super Mario Kart. I know I showed you the other cartridge, but uh, that was my childhood cartridge. I got this at a garage sale. It came in the box, the Super Nintendo box. Uh, there wasn't a console in there. Everything in here is absolutely mint condition, except it's missing the manual. So I'm waiting for that extra minty Super Nintendo Super Mario Kart manual uh, to come around so we can have that like extra awesome complete in box. All right, guys, that is going to do it. That is my entire 2021 Super Nintendo collection. Uh, 207 games, man. So we're, we're doing good on the Super Nintendo. I don't know how many games are in the library, but we're probably, you know, four or five short of an actual complete set. You know, all that stuff. But <laughs> that's not true. That's not true at all. There's a lot of games for the uh, Super Nintendo, like I said. But uh, it's one of, the, one of the consoles that I actually have all of my childhood games for. So I'm kind of proud of that. Uh, because I just remember the, the Super Nintendo so fondly. But um, guys, 
please like, comment, subscribe, share on social media. Don't forget to bang that notification bell so you can stay up to date on all of your CM Retro gaming goodness. What are some of your favorite Super Nintendo games? Leave a comment down below. I like to see those and I always reply. Take care of yourselves and we will see you on the next one.